Nestled in the heart of northeastern British Columbia, the Site C Dam is more than just a hydroelectric project. It's a $12 billion megaproject shrouded in controversy, environmental tension, and promises of clean energy. When complete, this colossal dam will generate enough electricity to power nearly half a million homes. But its construction has come at a high cost, thousands of hectares of farmland submerged, entire ecosystems altered, and indigenous rights called into question. Supporters hail it as a cornerstone of British Columbia's green energy future, while critics argue it's an environmental and financial boondoggle. Behind the scenes, stories of geotechnical challenges, legal battles, and ballooning budgets offer a glimpse into the complexity of constructing such an ambitious project. Today let's take a deep dive into Canada's controversial new mega dam project and unravel the political, environmental, and human stakes that define it. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Canada produces 60% of its electricity from hydropower, making it the third largest hydropower producer in the world. In fact, Site C Dam is actually one of 475 hydroelectric power stations in Canada. But why does Canada have so many dams? Well, Canada is home to some of the largest and most powerful river systems in the world. With more than 20% of the world's freshwater reserves, Canada's rivers are an ideal resource for harnessing renewable energy through hydropower. This is the Peace River, and Site C isn't the only dam along it. In fact, there are three dams along the river, all part of a massive hydropower initiative first proposed in the 1950s. The first of these, the W.A.C. Bennett Dam was completed in 1967, forming the Williston Reservoir. At the time, it was the largest earth-filled structure ever constructed, and today, Williston remains the seventh largest reservoir in the world by volume. Several years later in 1980, a second dam, the Peace Canyon Dam, was built farther downstream, creating a much smaller reservoir. One major advantage of this project is that by constructing multiple dams on the same river, the water can be reused to generate electricity as it flows downstream. When the Site C Dam is completed, it will span 1,000 meters in length, 500 meters in width, and stand 60 meters high. The dam consists of 16 million cubic meters of earth fill material, most of which was sourced from on-site excavations, though some had to be transported using a 5-kilometer conveyor belt system. This might seem like an enormous amount even for a dam, but it's designed to endure a once in 10,000 year earthquake, something many believe British Columbia is overdue for. The reservoir behind the dam will take around four months to fill once the remaining infrastructure is finished. As part of this process, 83 kilometers of the Peace River will be flooded, creating a reservoir that's more than half the size of Washington, D.C. Once operational, the dam will generate 5,100 gigawatt hours of electricity per year, boosting British Columbia's total power supply by approximately 8%. Additionally, the electricity produced will be renewable, readily available, and relatively cost-effective according to the builders. Despite years of lobbying by BC Hydro, the publicly owned company responsible for all three dams, the provincial government repeatedly turned down the Site C proposal. BC Hydro projected a 2% annual increase in electricity demand, but the government had a different perspective. That changed in 2014, when the project was finally approved. Since the initial proposal, British Columbia's population had tripled, the economy had surged, and Canada had begun its transition toward a net zero future. Taking all this into account, the government concluded that the demand for additional electricity was now justified. In July 2015, with a budget of approximately $6.4 billion, construction of the dam began. Now that construction is nearly finished, the cost of the project is doubled to $12 billion. Back then, not everyone was in agreement. In 2017, 
The newly elected NDP government of British Columbia, led by Premier John Horgan, commissioned an independent review of the project's financial viability. By this time, construction was well underway, and canceling a mega project of this size would have been a tough decision to make. The review, conducted by the British Columbia Utilities Commission, concluded that Site C was likely to face further cost overruns and that the province should consider suspending or terminating the project. But despite this, Premier Horgan ultimately decided to continue with the project, citing sunk costs and the need for long-term energy security. He said it wasn't the project he would have favored, but that it must be completed. The project encountered further challenges. In a 2020 progress report from BC Hydro, they labeled the overall status of the project as red, indicating serious concerns regarding the schedule, scope, and budget. Structural issues were also identified in parts of the dam's foundations. Site C is built on shale or soft rock which can shift under pressure unlike solid bedrock. This isn't a deal breaker as 16 other dams worldwide are built on similar ground. Yet, it's crucial to ensure a stable foundation, especially in a region prone to landslides and seismic activity. To address this, BC Hydro devised a unique solution. Instead of constructing the dam directly across the river, they opted for an L-shaped design as you can see in this image. Additionally, they added a concrete buttress beneath the dam to enhance stability and safeguard against seismic activity, improving the overall safety of the structure. So, if Site C can generate so much renewable energy, why has it faced criticism? To begin with, the dam is located on Treaty 8 land, an agreement established in 1899. Treaty 8 covers a region larger than France and guarantees the rights of 39 indigenous First Nations communities to hunt, fish, and trap on their traditional land. Flooding the Peace River to create the Site C Reservoir will destroy nearly 10,000 hectares of this territory, violating the constitutional rights of the Treaty 8 First Nations. Even John Horgan, before reversing his stance on the project, voiced concerns on behalf of Treaty 8. He wasn't alone. In 2019, the United Nations urged a halt to construction until an agreement was reached with the impacted First Nations. Although construction didn't stop, an agreement was eventually reached. And of course, a mega project like Site C impacts more than just people, it also disrupts local wildlife in the Peace River Valley. The area is home to a diverse range of species many of which will be displaced or killed by the construction of the reservoir. According to one report, at least 63 species are at risk due to the construction. Animals such as beavers, birds, bears, and elk will lose access to their natural habitats and migratory routes. While BC Hydro has plans to restore the wetlands destroyed by the project, rebuilding ecosystems is a slow process and critics argue that the damage will already be done. Now you might be wondering why, despite the several controversies, BC Hydro and the government were so determined to push ahead with this project? Well, there are few reasons for this. First and foremost, Site C will generate a substantial amount of clean, renewable electricity. However, it's not just the quantity of electricity that matters, availability is equally important. Within the dam, there is a component known as a headgate, which opens and closes to regulate the flow of water through the structure. By adjusting the headgate, the dam can increase electricity production during times of high demand and decrease it when demand is low. This ability is a key advantage of hydropower over other renewable sources like wind and solar. We cannot control the amount of wind or sunlight, but we can manage the water flow through a dam. This makes hydroelectric projects like Site C highly efficient. Additionally, since Site C is the third dam in a series along the same river, its efficiency is further enhanced. Another key reason for advancing the project is its economic advantages. Despite its high costs, Site C offers a variety of economic benefits for the region and for British Columbia as a whole. 
BC Hydro estimates that the construction of Site C will contribute $130 million to the regional GDP and $3.2 billion to the overall GDP of British Columbia. In essence, Site C will create numerous job opportunities, both directly through construction work and indirectly through the procurement of goods and services. As of February this year, more than 2,700 individuals were employed on site. This surge in activity not only stimulates the local economy, but also fosters overall development throughout the province. This brings us to the third reason, which is somewhat more speculative and certainly open to discussion. Site C isn't the only major project British Columbia has been pursuing. There is also the Coastal Gas Link Pipeline, a 670-kilometer pipeline designed to transport natural gas from northeast BC to the west coast. In a new facility being constructed in Kitimat, the gas will be cooled into a liquid state, resulting in liquefied natural gas. These processes demand a significant amount of electricity, and LNG can be sold internationally for big profits. Consequently, some believe that Site C is primarily being developed to generate the electricity necessary for preparing LNG for export. Critics argue that using hydropower to process natural gas amounts to an attempt to greenwash a climate-unfriendly industry, placing profit above public interest. BC Hydro has responded to this controversy by stating that Site C would be necessary with or without an LNG sector. As of now, the construction of the dam is nearing completion, with Site C expected to begin generating electricity sometime next year. If all goes as planned, we will finally be able to see the transformed landscape of the Peace River Valley. In the years to come, we can reassess whether Site C was a worthwhile endeavor. It's possible that the boost in clean electricity will offset the project's significant budget overruns. But the impacts of environmental damage, the LNG conspiracy and the rights of indigenous lands may overshadow the dam for its entire lifespan. What are your thoughts on this mega project? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.